publicizing this event. And our panelists from the Green Center and CCIS, Katie Feruza, Christine Seawagon, Anna Alden, and Nick Valentino. I'd also like to acknowledge our current circumstances by saying how sorry we are that this pandemic has disrupted your personal and academic lives. We hope that you and your family are safe and healthy, and we sincerely hope that we'll all be on campus again as soon as possible. I'm Marcy Krauss, Executive Director of CCAS, and I will be serving as our moderator for the first part of this session. Please let us know of any questions you have by typing them into the question and answer link at the bottom of your screen. We'll respond to as many questions as we can during the time we have together. We may hold some of your questions to the end. Please also note that closed captioning is available. You may use the link at the bottom of the screen to access this feature. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that most students on campus declare their major and the Rochester curriculum plans by the end of the second semester of their sophomore year. This year's abrupt change to our semester may have postponed your plans. We want to reassure you that it's not too late. All of the college's offices remain open after final exams end. So if your plans have been delayed, we hope you will still submit your online major declaration when you are able. The Rochester curriculum is that encourages students to customize their own educational path. We do provide some guidelines in so far as requiring most students to sample courses from each of the three divisions of learning, the humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences and engineering. But the ways in which our students craft their plans vary widely. As many of you know, our curriculum is very unique. And because of the emphasis on personal choice and the many clusters available to students, no two students graduating from the University of Rochester will have the same transcript. You'll see here that most students complete a divisional requirement in each of the three areas, but most engineering students and transfer students will have modified requirements. The college offers more than 65 majors and more than 80 minors. There are also more than 200 clusters to choose from. One of the true benefits of a liberal arts education is the opportunity to sample courses from a variety of disciplines. At minimum, students will complete a major in two clusters. Again, keeping in mind that those requirements might be modified for engineering students and transfer students. You will want to consult the appropriate department website and or the director of undergraduate studies in that department for information about your intended major and or minor. Rochester's flexible curriculum also makes it possible for students to double major and double minor, although you're not required to do so. If you are interested in a second major, it may be helpful to consult with an advisor in CCAS, as well as an advisor in each of the departments you're considering majoring in. In some cases, the addition of a second major results in multiple degrees, as you'll see here on this slide. When that happens, students are responsible for completing all of the degree requirements for each degree, as well as the required number of credits. You'll also want to be sure that you understand the three, two, one rules as they relate to overlapping courses. Three courses are allowed to be shared in common between two majors. Two courses may be shared between a major and a minor. One course can be shared between a major or minor and a cluster. I should also mention that there are certain programs that have special overlap rules that you will want to be aware of. So whenever you're thinking about a double major, a double degree, a double minor, or any combination, again, you'll want to consult with the department to make sure you're aware of any special policies. It might also be helpful to remember that sometimes you can pursue your interests with a minor or by designing a unique course of study with elective courses rather than completing a second major. So the steps to declare, we're going to have two slides on this process. 
all of the information you need is available online. And obviously that's very helpful to all of us as we continue our learning and our interactions with campus advisors virtually. Your first stop is generally the department's website. You'll want to check to see if there are specific requirements or steps for declaring your major. Some departments will expect you to schedule an appointment with an advisor in that program before you submit any formal paperwork. Make sure you have consulted your academic records so that you have a list of the courses you have already completed, as well as the grades you've earned. You can do this by reviewing the information in UR Student. You will use an online major declaration form to declare your major or minor. Remember that you will need to submit a separate form for each major and minor you wish to declare. You will be notified by the department if your form has been accepted or if you need to make any revisions. Let's take a look at some of the parts of this form. The major minor declaration form is available on the registrar's forms page. Again, it is an online form, so you can easily access it from wherever you are. When you click on that form, you'll see that you come to the major minor declaration options page. And you'll want to select the button indicating the appropriateness of the form that you will be submitting. So you'll indicate that you are declaring a new major or that you're declaring a new minor. I'll also add that you are unable to declare a minor until you have formally declared a major. Next on the form, you'll see that you will indicate your subject area, the type of degree, and then you'll be asked to list the courses that you have taken, as well as the courses you plan to take. If you have questions about this section of the form, it's a good idea, again, to talk to an advisor or a faculty member from the department where you will be declaring your major. As you are probably are aware, some majors offer the choice of either a BA degree or a BS degree. For other majors, there is only uh, an option, perhaps, of one degree. So for example, an English major would be completing a BA degree. A neuroscience major would be completing a BS degree. If you're interested in a physics major, you have the choice of either a BA degree or a BS degree. You will be asked to indicate as well when you are completing the form, when you completed your primary writing requirement, or if you have not yet completed your primary requir requirement, what your plans are to do so. Before submitting the form, you'll also need to complete the remainder of your Rochester curriculum registration. Again, you will need to enter something in each section. If you are a transfer student, or an engineering student and you have a cluster waived, you would indicate that you are exempt from that requirement. Keep in mind as well that if you're not sure about a particular cluster, it's easy to make a change in your declaration using a separate form. So some students will sometimes worry that they're not sure about all of the different pieces of their Rochester curriculum but they know exactly what they want to do to declare their major. Again, it might be helpful to talk to an advisor about this, but make your best guess for now, and then you can always change that information at a later time. Finally, at the bottom of the form, you can indicate if you will be completing an additional major, minor, or degree. And again, you might not know at the time whether you'll be doing that, and it's fine if you don't complete any information on this form. And finally, you'll click Submit. 
And at that point, your form will go directly to the department where you wish to declare. And someone in that department will review your form and communicate with you. So we wanna make sure that you know there are plenty of resources to help you get started in this process or definitely along the way. You're not on your own. So if you're undecided about your plans, it may be helpful to talk with an advisor in CCAS or a career counselor in the Green Center about what you are considering and how you might be able to narrow down your choices. Sometimes students feel a lot of pressure in making this decision. Again, keep in mind that you can change your mind later in your college career if needed. We do want to remind students that there are some deadlines that you will want to be aware of. So you'll want to plan to declare your major by the end of your sophomore year. We're kind of there at this point for students in the class of 2022. Summer is definitely okay too. But it's also important for you to know that you may have good reasons, that we are aware that you may have good reasons to wait. It may be that you're not quite ready to declare. It may be that you need to complete an additional course in your major before you're ready to declare. And in most cases, that decision to delay is definitely fine. We do want you to be aware of some potential deadlines to keep in mind that may be related to financial aid or studying abroad. Again, an advisor in the College Center for Advising Services can help give you some guidance if you have any concerns about this. So when you declare your major, uh, we definitely encourage you to meet with someone in your prospective department. We hope that you will also know that departments are eager to get to know you and your interests. So these are just some suggested questions that you might be interested in asking a faculty advisor in a major. We know that students will have individual questions as well. But certainly it might be uh, of interest for you to know that the department will have certain events that will be held for their majors and that you will be able to get an invitation to attend those events. Special opportunities might be available. There may be an academic council that you can participate in. Of course, many students know about the opportunities to apply to be a teaching assistant. But again, those are the types of questions that you might want to share with a faculty member in the department. So congratulations, you've declared your major, some of you perhaps, others of you are still planning to declare your major and we're really glad to hear about that. I do want to mention that the sophomore committee traditionally gives each sophomore a gift to commemorate the declaration of the major Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this spring as we had planned. Uh, I do want to let everyone know, and the sophomore committee wants everyone to know that we do have gifts for you, and we will be planning an event to distribute your gift at a later time. Marcy, I do have a couple of questions okay, that maybe we great. can address now. For sure. Um, so we have one question for a double degree. The slide mentions a requirement of 136 credits. Why is there a larger credit requirement for this? That's a great question. I mean, the larger credit requirement acknowledges that students need to do a little bit more in terms of completing two degrees. I will mention that for most students, completing at least 136 credits is probably going to automatically happen simply because for many of our students, completing those two degrees results in potentially some overload semesters or some summer sessions in order to fit in all of the requirements. So it, it, I guess the bottom line is, in part, um, you are doing something extra, you're earning a second degree. So there's an expectation for additional credits. But also I think very few students will find that that 136 credit uh, requirement is a hardship of any kind. 
And the other question is for double minors, we don't have to declare until after our major has been approved. Is that correct? That is correct. So you need to have a major declared before you uh, complete a minor or a, two minors. Um, I should also mention as well, um, I think one of the slides pointed this out, but when you complete your Rochester curriculum requirements for the first time, let's say you're planning to major in political science and you plan to have a minor in biology. So you've indicated at the bottom of the form that you plan at a later time to declare a minor in biology. Remember that you'll have to go back, submit a new form so that that minor in biology is formally declared. Great. I think that's it for now. All right, super. Thanks. So we're going to go ahead and um, switch presenters uh, with our next slide. So um, we'll be turning over the program to Katie and uh, I will manage the slides for Katie. So if I'm not doing a good job with that, Katie will, will let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. Yep. Um, I knew it was my cue when Pinocchio showed up. <laughs> Um, so hi everybody, my name is Katie Feruza. I'm a career advisor at the Green Center. Um, so I am going to talk a little bit about after you've declared your major or as you're trying to make a decision about a major, how does it connect to academic options and career possibilities? Um, so as it says here, declaring majors and minors immediately connects you to a network of faculty, staff, students, alumni, and the U of our community. Um, but one thing we actually heard, so we surveyed sophomores last year and we asked them, what are some things that you'd like to know more about? And two of the top things were, how do I connect majors to career possibilities? And how do I find internships and research related to my major? Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, as well as how can I get connected to my new departments? So you can go to the next slide. Marcy. Okay, got it. Um, so a few things that I wanted to point out that will help you get connected and try things out, get curious. Um, all of that is Handshake, the Melior Collective, and the Department Authorized Approval List. So I am actually going to attempt to share my screen now, Mercy. Okay, okay. so I'm going to stop Hopefully my share. Will. Yeah. Hopefully I will be able to do this. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so let's actually start here with the Melior Collective. So if you're not familiar, the Melior Collective is a platform for exploration, but also to network and directly connect you with faculty, staff, and mainly alumni of the University of Rochester that could help you learn more about academic and career options and kind of help you in a variety of ways. Um, so if you click on the networking tab here, you can actually sort and find people by major um, that you know you might want to connect with. So I would highly encourage you all to get into this platform, set up an account, and this is a great way to see where people in your major have gone, what they have done, and also to directly connect with them. You can actually send them messages right through this platform. And of course, we at the Green Center can help you through that process and help you to network. Um, a couple other things. So Handshake, um, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this platform, but Handshake is our resource for doing many things. Um, one thing that you might know, not know about is it has a student to student messaging platform and you can actually identify students at other universities as well as the University of Rochester only um, who are in different majors. So you can actually select, let's say if you were interested in a psychology major, you could go through and find other students who are in that major who have made their profile public. You can message them through this. You can see some things they're involved with, what they're doing. And that may actually help you to kind of explore what options that you might have in front of you and also connect with other people within your major. Um, one other thing that was on the slide is this authorized approval list. So I think Marcy mentioned that there's many, many good reasons to get connected to your department. Um, your faculty and um, anyone who's involved in your department. This list provides kind of the first point of contact. 
um, and you can find the contact information of someone to reach out to to make that initial contact if you don't already have someone within your department that you feel comfortable talking to. Obviously, we highly recommend that you get to know your faculty within your, your major um, and your minors in any department. I think it's going to help you for a variety of reasons. Um, for one, you know, someday you may be asking them for a letter of recommendation um, to go to graduate school or to do something. And I think the more that you get to know them, um, the better. And also they can help you obviously explore what possibilities there might be um, with your major. One more thing I wanted to point out, well, two more things, um, is we actually have a page on the Career Center website about exploring careers by major. So you can see there's a lot of information. One thing I did want to point out is we always tell students major does not equal career. It typically does not linearly lead you somewhere. Um, there are some majors that obviously are a bit more linear than others, and there's, also, there's always very important skills and competencies that you're gaining through your major, um, but it's really important that you're exploring, you're trying things out, and you're talking to people to figure out what it is you want to do with that major. Um, so these are some resources to help you with that. We actually have one that's called, What Can I Do With This Major? So pretty straightforward that students can check out, and that might give you some ideas of possibilities. Um, the last thing I wanted to show everyone is right on the Green Center website. Um, I wanted to acknowledge the fact that obviously we're in a very challenging time with the COVID-19 situation. Um, some of you may have had summer plans that have either changed or been disrupted as a result of what's going on right now. And we realize that it's very challenging. If you had planned, for example, to do a research opportunity or an internship that's now canceled or maybe gone virtual or looks a little bit different, um, you know, that can certainly be a challenge. So in this virtual resources and strategies, I just wanted to mention that we do have a lot of information, um, virtual resources for supporting you through this process, video resources, advising information um, to help you move through and, and make some good decisions. Um, in addition to that, you know, I just wanted you to be aware that there are a lot of virtual internships, micro internships, things listed in Handshake. So there are still some opportunities if you um, have the capacity to do that and want to explore. Okay, so if we wanna go back to the slideshow, we can, but I guess that was some of the things that I wanted to share. I believe that Christine will be putting those links into the chat so that you can refer back to some of those things that we just talked about. Um, but you know, I think one of the last things is Marcy and I both wanted you to all know that um, you know, connect with CCAS and or the Green Center that you're, um, we're here virtually for the Green Center. You can schedule advising appointments with us via Handshake um, for Zoom or phone. Um, and we're really here to partner with you through this process and help you, whether it's trying to decide on a major, how to actually declare it, what can you do with it, and what comes next. We're here to help you through that whole process now and in the future. Great. I'll turn it back over to you, Marcy. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Katie. Um, so, Chris, any other questions come up? So, no, we're, we're okay. we have no questions unless there are some out there now and you'd like to type them in. But as Great. of right now, we don't have any. Okay, so just a reminder if anyone does have a question, uh, please use the QA button at the bottom of the screen and we'll wait um, a little bit longer um, to see if there are any questions that come in. While we're waiting, I could um, certainly ask our HAGEM representatives who joined us today, Nick and Anna, whether there's anything they might want to add from their perspective uh, of working with our engineering students. Uh, so for each of the uh, engineering majors, the undergraduate coordinator is gonna be a big part of this process uh, too. So, in them, you've already met them before. Um, if it's BME, it's Timey. If it's Chemi, it's Jen Condit. If it's CSE, it's either Sarah or Danny. Uh, optics is Dustin. And Barb mechanical engineering, Barb is easy. I always forget Barb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't so forget Barbara. <laughs> Don't forget Barbara. <laughs> people will help you in this process too, all along the way. So it's good that you already started with someone that you probably have some sort of relationship with. If you're into your second year and you haven't met them yet, um, contact them today uh, just to introduce yourself. You maybe have a situation where you've also switched majors and have gone over. So talk to the undergraduate coordinator um, to help you with this process. Your faculty advisor will help, but uh, you'll probably be able to get a quicker answer from the undergraduate coordinator or from the HM Dean's office. I will just support Nick's point. I think that your undergrad coordinator will be your best friend, <laughs> whether you've declared or not. So. If you're thinking about declaring and would like help planning out what classes you'll need or making that academic plan, you should talk with them um, because you can always put it on paper before putting it on the form. And then if anything should change and you deviate from whatever you put on your form, you can also talk with them about changing and making revisions to that declaration. One other thing I wanted to add to is that when you're looking to declare not just your major, if it's in an engineering, but if you're looking to declare a minor or another major, the clusters rules change. So if you are going to complete a degree outside of the Hajim school, you're going to have to do full clusters. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of temptations to do a minor. Uh, in addition to your HAGEM major, it's something that you're going to want to talk to your faculty advisor or one of the HAGEM dean staff about um, because it is difficult to do and it might be a lot more additional coursework that you don't necessarily need. Um, the engineering degrees go through accreditation called AVET accreditation where they ensure that you are taking everything you possibly need to be uh, this type of engineer. The only uh, degrees that are not AVET accredited are uh, engineering science, uh, the optics part of the degree, optical engineering is accredited, but optics itself um, is in the process of, of getting accredited, and computer science. Um, so when, look, if all the other, maybe if I didn't mention your major in those things, one of those things, if you're going to add a minor, you really want to talk to someone first because it is a significant amount of additional coursework onto an already strict um, uh, curriculum. So um, it's always good to talk that over before you put it on paper. And Nick and I are available for Zoom appointments and over email, so you can check the CCAS website to make appointments or to contact us. We do have one question. Uh, what exactly is a field of study and how does this differ from what your major is? So I can answer that. I guess we, we will sometimes use the term field of study to refer to either a major or a minor. So basically the same thing as a major. And I'll reiterate some of the information we shared earlier, which is uh, that even though the semester is over, we're moving into final exams and uh, the completion of kind of classes this semester, I do want to mention that the Green Center and CCAS and all of the other offices that you have come to rely on for your academic related questions and support are available throughout the summer. All of our offices are open and we will be um, happy to meet with you uh, via Zoom uh, until that point in time when we're all back on campus. So there is a question about um, for our HAGEM advisors. If I declared a HAGEM major and a non-HAGEM minor, do I require additional coursework? I think Nick might be frozen, so I'll answer this one. <laughs> um, so the only time where you would have additional um, coursework, which would usually be additional credits or um, an additional cluster, if you only required one cluster, is if you do two majors and one of them is not HAGEM. Um, so if you were to do a non-HAGEM minor, it may fulfill your cluster requirements or extra humanities or social science requirements. Um, but it will not usually involve extra coursework besides the coursework you need to do to actually complete the minor. Great. So I think at this point, unless our panelists have anything else that you would like to add, we will conclude our webinar. We really thank everybody who joined us today for your participation. We hope that you have a, a great conclusion to the semester and a wonderful summer. Again, we hope we'll see you back on campus in the fall. We will plan to post these slides on the CCIS, um, a link to the slides on the CCIS website. 
so that uh, if you want to refer to this information later or you talk to another student who didn't have a chance to join us today, they'll be able to access this information at a later time. So um, thank you very much from all of us and we wish you all the best for the remainder of the semester. We have one last question. Ah, okay. <laughs> can, can SF online courses in this coming summer be used towards a major, minor, or cluster? That's a good one. I think people have questions about that. Yeah, actually, um, we haven't, I don't know that I've seen anything formal about grading for summer classes, but my expectation right now would be that um, the, the special rules that were in place for this spring semester were put in place because we needed to make a sudden transition to online teaching. We, are already, we already know that online teaching will take place in the summer. So we expect that, I expect at least, that courses will be graded in the regular way. Uh, you may hear otherwise once the summer session starts, but that would be my understanding right now. And I see Nick has, has I'm back. Again. <laughs> uh, if one of you that are majoring in electrical computer engineering can create a solution for my internet going out during pivotal parts of meetings, that would help. <laughs> uh, I missed, did we answer the question that the student asked about the minor? I got great. Yes, Anna. Anna handled it beautifully. Nice, Anna. <laughs> well done. You're all done. <laughs> Good. Well, it looks like we don't have any more questions. So again, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Um, and a link to this presentation will be available from the CCIS website. So again, good luck as you finish this semester and we hope you have a wonderful summer. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.